Good morning and welcome to today's live show. No, I'm getting on a little late. Sleep was very important last night, apparently. So um, we had some wailing going on, but uh, appreciate you guys coming here this morning. Thank you for clicking on my video. If you are not watching this live, make sure to tune into the last 15 minutes of the stream so you, you can see when we are breaking down every stock that we do cover on this channel. OK, so we're live today um, and we're paying attention to our daily expected moves over on Patreon. We actually posted those daily expected moves um just now i literally like cranked them out before there was an open so uh, hopefully you guys get that going on and then i know someone just let me know if craig gets in here he emailed me this morning having a tr having a little trouble signing in uh to our course so i'm gonna make sure to tackle that problem make sure he's able to sign in and things like that we're noticing as we start off the day you know a little bit down tick here uh cues as well a little bit down tick we remember it's it's perfectly fine um, for the spy here really to kind of flag out and then head upward but as we are in the last day of the month there is a good opportunity for this to end down in this area so we'll pay attention to that throughout the day let's go ahead and click through a few apple seeing that major sell-off here we'll have to see if that comes to anything tesla uh seeing that it's still in in some sort of consolidation right still in some sort of consolidation i'd say at this point so if it wants to head higher maybe it does want to dip down like this and then we come create something in the future here Amazon trying to go up, but looking like it might pull back down. We'll have to see what happens with that. And NVIDIA, I'm not able to break down to lower levels at this point. AMD, seeing that pop higher as well. Seeing if that two hour can actually get some strength behind it, go up into positive territory, see that kind of go like that. But we'll have to see if that's going to happen today. Meta dropping off just a little bit here. Uh, maybe on a 15 minute, we'll start to see some kind of 15 minute divergence down in this area. So paying attention to my daily expected moves and things like that. I can look at Meta. It's got room to the downside just a little bit here. So make sure if you are part of Patreon, you're getting those on your chart. It was just put out on Patreon. Microsoft down at that weekly expected move. OK, so this is something we're paying attention to. You see the divergences down here, the 30 minute not really giving you divergence. <clears throat> if that goes positive here, we could see a positive move. We could see how this could go up. Um, and if it wants to continue down, I mean, this is getting pretty tight. So I think a move is coming, but we'll have to see about that. But good morning, Philip. Good morning, Amin. Hey, Ajax review, Matthew. Good morning, guys. Google seeing some positivity. Will that last? Okay, this 30 minute divergence, something I'm really paying attention to. Seeing if that does something like this by end of day, that might be kind of telling. Um, this is a pretty steep drop off here. So that's not the best news in the world, Apple, but. Maybe look down at a 15 minute. We're already almost over. So maybe maybe this is a liquidity grab. We have to be open to that. Still in positive territory on the 15. But this little divergence up here um, on that five minute actually playing out to the downside here. So we'll have to see if it's able to actually roll over this 30 minute or if we're going to hold up uh, at least in positive territory. Right. We can curl over for a moment. but We don't want to go down too far here. Um, so we'll pay attention to this going forward. Um, if I am in this trade, right, I'm thinking, hey, if this crosses over, there's opportunity to come break this low. So if I get a retest or something like that, I can just get out, get right back in. Who's got some fun plays? I wasn't even able to make coffee this morning. That's that's how rough it's been this morning. I'm just chugging water. Nvidia starting to push higher here, curling up on the 30 minute. Might see some positivity. This looks pretty flaggy still, but AMD seeing a 1% move. That is a good move up there. Tesla dropping off, like we said, pay attention. Oh God, what happened to Rumble? Oh no, someone mentions Rump. Ooh, earnings, okay. So earnings, this is why I don't trade around earnings or anything like that. Uh, looks like the revenue came in way lower than expected. So that is a huge decrease there. So you're going to see that drop off. I ain't trading no earnings or anything like that. Two hour on Amazon. This could be something that pumps higher. 
gives us some kind of setup today. We'll have to pay attention to that moving forward. A rumble, like yapping down to really start the day. Kind of rough there for rumble. Really did want to look at TLT, seeing that drop off a little bit, see if these yields can actually bounce from here, right? See the divergence on the two hour. Could see some kind of reaction there. Um, sometimes you got to take the technicals with a grain of salt on the yield, so I like to use TLT more so. Good morning, Marina. Marina. Oh, Mara. <clears throat> Mara, again, there's that strong move that we were talking about. Look at the flag. Look at the move upward. Um, now, this is one we can pay attention to. It's going positive here on the two hour daily. Are we rolling up? Yes. So there is some positivity to possibly be had with Mara going forward. I want to be a little careful with this. I mean, you're above the 200. It looks good. Um, the technicals are telling you that this has room to the upside, but we're in an important zone here and we have some news coming out tomorrow. So let's just be a little bit careful, but great, great move, right? We've been catching this for a while, 30 minute, um, really been paying attention to this and seeing it flag out, break the flag. Now we're heading higher. So it, this is really doing exactly how we were expecting, right? Left head dips down a little bit lower to pick up some liquidity in here. Not necessarily a full on shoulder, I guess, right? We didn't get that retest of this area or anything, but we're seeing that just kind of conclude upward going to positive territory. Uh, now you'll notice you are setting up some kind of divergence as of right now. So this is what I say you have to be worried about, some kind of divergence up in this area. But if those bigger time frames take over and this thing just sees positivity, that's possible. I'd just be a little bit um, skeptical with that early on. Okay, now this actually looking like a flag for SMCI. Maybe that wants to break down to lower levels. If not, we need to see that vertical recovery here, kind of complete the cup, get a handle, go upward. Um, that's one thing that I would pay attention to there. And this thing just still just dropping off. Tesla still just dropping off. Meta able to buy back up there as well. So that's good. Meta able to buy back up from here, that daily range below us. But we're actually at that weekly range. So if you have the weekly ranges up, you know that um, Meta is testing those weekly ranges as of right now. Actually, it did maybe this morning. Yeah, it's actually still trading outside of the weekly range right here. So be a little careful. This could bounce back up or we could see something crazy happen. Most likely I see us bouncing by end of day and we see some positivity, maybe even going into next week. So that's something to pay attention to. AMD seeing that positive move. Um, really want to see if it's able to break above this level right here, right? If it's able to break above that level, that's a very bullish thing. We built up a lot of liquidity in here. Maybe AMD is going to see a big move. We'll have to see. Um, we're still trading like water, trading those technicals, but... Corey, we can look over at HD real quick. And then we'll look at NVIDIA again. Uh, this not looking good from the 30 minute perspective, just looking like it wants to curl over negative territory. Maybe it sets up that divergence by end of day, right? So pay attention if we get a few bars down like this, we could cross over, create, or at least start to create a divergence. Now, will that confirm by end of day? Maybe not, but we could see if this happened. You could see a little divergence down there on the 30 minute. Then you could be a little more confident with the trade at this point. If this is going to just keep going up, then you want that to continue positive territory. That's what I would say there. Um, but as of right now, it looks like we want to curl down. So you might get some kind of double bottom or some kind of divergence at this level. And NVIDIA seeing that start to cross up, kind of get out of this, uh, I would say, flagging right now. So it's kind of giving above this high. We could start to see this gain some positivity here. Hi, G. Armando, Spy's on the move. Uh, let's go look at the Spy again real quick. Yep, Spy is moving right here. Able to go up and up and up. We'll have to see what happens with that. I'm really looking if this two-hour crosses up. I think we're going to get a touch somewhere up here. Maybe not today, but at least going into next week, we'll get something up in this area. We may want to consolidate for a moment um, at these levels to then head higher. Maybe we do something like this, consolidate this way on like a 30 minute land in this zone. And then, you know, go into next week, we see a push. So 
We don't know the news that is coming out with PCE, though. We don't know what Jerome Powell is going to say. So, I just hit my sign. So, we have to be just a little bit cautious going into this weekend, because there is opportunity for him to say some bad things. Uh, but if TLT is able to actually drop off, right, if this is just some kind of uh, flag, like interesting flag, I guess wedging at this point, not necessarily a flag, you could kind of see something like this, something like this down here, it's wedging. Maybe we actually do see those rates go a little bit higher first. So we'll pay attention to that volatility, scooping up, getting that two hour to cross. I actually have the divergence as of right now. So Technically, you have a tiny little divergence here on volatility, and that could start to move upward. The dollar looking like it wants to top out here on the two hour, so we could see that dollar drop off, see some positivity across the board here. Um, that's something we'll want to pay attention to. Let's look. Uh, Meta still down 1%, breaking down to 489, breaking below that level at this point. Apple still breaking down. We just want to look at the shorter time frames here. See if we curl back up in positive territory from this area. Uh, what this would tell me if we started to head higher from here is like we didn't have sufficient liquidity to head higher. So now we need to go grab some good liquidity. Where's your best source of liquidity for Apple right in this area here? So now you're still seeing that head and shoulders, a slight break to the upside and then dropping back down to grab more. So you want this to turn back around very quickly, I would say. If it starts to break down lower, then you're worried about that 30 minute. Good morning, Lucas. What's your thoughts on Tesla short term highs? Uh, Tesla, I think it is still within kind of a flag here, like a like an interesting flag. Now, that's just an idea. You don't have multiple touches of these points yet, uh, but you can kind of see how it's lining up. OK, so we'll do something like this. See if uh, we want to break down and then break to the upside or if this is enough. Right. If we're just grabbing liquidity here. Um, to actually head higher, you know, at this high, at this here, this could be very, very good. So you want to see if that curls back up positive territory as of right now, rolling down, going negative. So the opportunity is more so it's going to do something like that, maybe break to the upside here and then curve out like that, give you some kind of structure to head higher. That's what I would say about that, Dave. NVIDIA seeing a good, good push here. And maybe that's rotation again, right? Apple, maybe people just rotating back into AMD, NVIDIA, and things like that. Good morning. I hope you guys have your coffee because I don't. I might just go make coffee real quick. Oh, you are? Oh, okay. The Q is an area you really, really like is right here. This 446, maybe up to 447. Um, if we see some positivity today, if we start to curve out around there, that actually would be a good sign, I would say, for good liquidity grab to go higher. If we get excited and do something like that, I'd be a little worrisome. The SPY, if it would get some more strength throughout the day, like some just rapid strength, Right, and we get up to this area. Well, this is a zone where we can see those sellers come in. Right on on the last day of trading, we like these zones in here. Um, they can act as resistance at you know the end of the day. The close is coming up, so just be a little bit careful in this area right here. And if Craig shows up, Craig, you better tell me if you're here. I mean, I don't know for sure, Armando, but I would say that this is a little bit strange behavior at this point. Um, sure, we have we have signals of this like playing out, right? We have a five minute divergence here, but that is that's a big drop for such positivity yesterday um, and the day before. So just a little interesting here seems a little bit wonky to me. Might just be a fake out to the downside. I just want to see if this 30 minute actually does cross. Then I want to say, okay, the opportunity is there to break through this. So if this crosses and then I see a break through this level right here, um, that's when I'll be a little bit more bearish. But if that's quickly a retest, buys back up. So we just got to look how quick it is. Uh, as of right now, seeing that wick up just a little, little bit, but we have to see if that can buy back a whole one, one and a half percent.
Your thoughts? It, it could keep ripping, and that's why we're still paying attention to upside, right? So we're still paying attention to upside here. So the two hour on Amazon, look at that strength coming through, right? So we see the two hour on Amazon giving us strength. NVIDIA about to maybe curl up positive territory. AMD about to curl up. Can it go positive here? Um, Meta even looks like it could curl back up, go positive. We see another push higher. So there are pushes higher at this point. Even Microsoft showing you I could co create a uh, closer two hour divergence, maybe give you a triple divergence here. Google saying a similar thing, right? I can curl up into positive territory. Is that move going to last very long? I don't know. I think it maybe comes and tests the high and then we see that drop off. So be a little bit careful with that. Mara going higher. Things like that are happening. SMCI not able to really push higher. So we're seeing some rotation along this into NVIDIA and AMD at this point. We have to see if that is going to prove some higher prices for AMD and NVIDIA or if that's just going to um, fade throughout the day. Maybe we see them rotate back into Apple. Oh my gosh, you guys, it is a morning out here. Did you get trapped? What was the trade? Uh, that's the, <laughs> technically that's the, is that my thumbnail? I, I don't, I don't even remember guys. I just pumped out everything this morning. Apple has been in a descending channel since January 25th. When it hits the top side, I sell. Um, that's why I said I would uh, short the hell out of it yesterday. And yeah, that, that makes sense. If you see the channel, I'm guessing somewhere up in this area, we can make that channel down in here like this. But you notice we crossed through it, most likely right here. We broke it to the upside, so that is a good sign. It wants to go higher, actually, um, but that doesn't have to go higher, right? We pay attention to the short time frames too, but it did break this little trend, so that's just what I'm paying attention to at this moment, just because it's seeming like this is a good move. Yeah, that's January 25th, 24th right here. What was it? It was Amazon seeing the big push. This is the interesting one. Amazon seeing a big push higher at this point. You think 171.50 baseline for this? Very well could be. I could pay attention to daily expected moves and things like that. Um, what is it? 169 is 169 like 170 so it came down to about that daily expected move now you could say hey maybe we start to head upward from here um we could head pretty high with apple throughout the day if people really want to get bullish today but as of right now seeing that sell off not a good sign that you're going to see this like completely reverse but maybe we're able to build back up by end of day or something like that and then we see positivity going into next week but as of right now, wicking out, so not able to cross down on this 30 minute as of right now, which is a good sign for some bullishness, but we wanna see this 15 minute has to roll up. We have to see some strength here, maybe get a 15 minute divergence going on into next week, and then we'll have to talk. Hey man, good luck. Aaron says, good luck everyone. Don't blow out your accounts probably this weekend because we do get some news tomorrow. We'll be live for a little bit tomorrow. Gonna go live um, during Jerome Powell's talk in the morning. Uh, that's most likely all we're gonna do. So uh, I know that if Craig joins today, make sure you hit, uh, hit me up in these comments, okay? Hit me up in the chat. But as of right now, remember that course is only three days left to get for a hundred bucks before that price increases, okay? So be... Um, diligent, it'd be a good thing to do over the weekend, all right? We're seeing some people take that, and that is great, especially as we're probably approaching some kind of topping out, um, at least on the SPY. If we keep continuing to head higher on this two hour, um, we could start to see a top really form up here. This is another point where we'll have to pay attention. That two hour divergence, if we're able to get it up in this area, um, will that prove to be some kind of significance? Last run before the crash. Yeah, Carl, and that's kind of that's kind of what the video was yesterday. It's potential for that, right? You got cupping, maybe we handle out for a little bit, but 
once it does reach this point, you'll get that two hour divergence. We might be seeing the last bull trap. Calls on AOD and sold them. I can finally afford bread. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, you guys. What's the daily move for AMD? AMD, that daily move is a little bit higher. NVIDIA. Looking at my Patreon and daily moves here. Okay, a little bit higher for NVIDIA as well. Actually, a pretty solid move coming for NVIDIA if it's able to hit that topside range. Let's look at NVIDIA and see if that um, 20 moved, by the way. It's sitting just a tiny bit higher. Let's put it right above it, right above it. All right, so right there now it's moved up to 881.60 roughly. Look at some other dailies. Meta breaking down through that 20 at this point. So you want that to buy back up. Microsoft sitting right in between it. Uh, Google sitting at higher levels. So this one, you know, Google has potential to pull back here, but it is riding this five day. It's bought itself some room. It's not even overbought at this point. So that's something to pay attention to. AMD um, getting rejected from its own 50 as of right now. Kind of stuck behind underneath these moving averages. The two. Uh, bigger ones, right? So you want to see it get above that by the end of the week, most likely. NVIDIA, right? It's right there. We already saw this, but um, good to look at it again, right? We're still in a good spot. Amazon, what did uh, Amazon use ahead higher? Well, it's just riding this five-day moving average up at this point. So we could be seeing some kind of push here. Uh, Tesla uh, coming into the five. So it's kind of stuck between the five and the 20. want to see if that breaks up, breaks down. Uh, most likely, we want to see that Break to the upside. This daily has been pretty strong. Uh, Apple seeing that downturn, right? We're seeing that turn down, but it's it's still right around the five day. So if it's able to take this back by end of day, it actually looks okay for Apple even going on into next week. So we'll have to see if that strength comes through. Use nothing to see there. Spy just riding that five up. So. Now we can just pay attention, see if we create two hour divergences. You can see the curving of this MACD on a lot of charts. This could be the signal, right? To be patient here, look for that divergence to set up even going on into next week. And then maybe this will be ripped away with something happening. But as of right now, looks like curl up positive territory. And if that does right, if this two hour divergence doesn't come to anything, we pull back, we curl back up right, then we're going to see this continue and we can continue to be bullish. If we get a divergence, it comes down, curls back up, positive territory, right, does something like this, we can see another push higher and then it could consolidate another push higher. So we can pay attention to those things, but this is looking like um, an area where we can see weakness. We have another opportunity for a top up in this area. I, I would say that as of this crossing, if this crosses and we go up, we could see that actually proven here. Because if we actually see some consolidation going into next week, what if we like dip down like this, come back up, curl up, we could see this extend for quite some time. So we're just going to pay attention to this two hour curling up in positive territory. Uh, spy, not necessarily. I don't do day plays on the spy. And a lot of the time I like trading individual stocks a lot more. So this curling up would be a positive thing, though. All right. So if this curled up positive territory, I'd look two weeks out maybe target next week's uh, upper side of that weekly expected move. That could be a play, but as of right now, it hasn't crossed just yet. So I have to be a little bit more patient here. Most likely, if I was going to take a trade, I would look for that, you know, some kind of signal down in this area. So I'd look for a 15 minute to maybe cross positive territory, right? 15 minute, give me some kind of divergence, which we're not really seeing across the board here. Um, so that's something to pay attention to, but you can notice that with this point over here, so this point over here, you actually do have like a double bottom divergence here and you have that other divergence here. So you have multiple point divergence. You could have been in, got out, get back in, boom, that move happens. And then you can ride that, um, a little bit higher if the two hour can cross over, which it really looks like it's going to. Apple, as of right now, 15 minute, we need that thing to curl back up. You don't want to flag or anything like that. So you want to start to fill this gap pretty early on in the day. Don't want that 30 minute to cross over. If it lasts another 
you know, 30 minutes or so, we're probably getting that to cross. Look at that. See that red bar down here on the histogram? Very, very small. But you can see that red bar on the histogram. So you really want to see that positivity come back. Or if this is going to go down, you just don't want that to go negative at all. You just want this to kind of do this and curl right back up. So we'll have to see if that's going to happen. Big sell off end of day. And it very well could be a, a sell off at the end of the day with the news coming out tomorrow. And we're seeing some stocks push higher, right? Amazon. Um, another very, very good one, I believe, is Google to pay attention to. If this curls up, uh, goes into positive territory, we can see positivity, but you'll notice that this has been getting pretty tight up in this area. So something to pay attention to would be if we create some kind of divergence and that actually confirms my end of day, this might be a good position to get in on. So Apple, we'll just have to see what comes of this. I can smell the coffee being made. It's the best. People aren't going to want to hold over the over the weekend. And Mojoma, yeah, yeah, work on buying that course. Try to get it this weekend. It's a it's still just a hundred dollars, and then the price increases. So hundred dollars until. Um, until the end of the month right so the last day of the month will be the last day to grab that course just a few days left but appreciate you trying to get that it's great i'm looking for a buying opportunity on apple i'm wondering if it will hold its current support price today it's coming down into this liquidity area so you have to say there's still potential for a bounce maybe it just this wasn't enough to head higher we thought like hey this was a sign that it was but it turns out it's not now it's dropping down pretty dramatically we have to pay attention to any downside. If this starts to go negative, break through this level right here. That is probably not the best news for Apple, right? So we want to pay attention if that curls back down. Stuck to your mantra, traded like water. Good job, Alan. How was your play today? Do you have a good play? Sometimes SPY just goes up and up and buy stocks that make it are losing. How does that happen? But the stocks that make it up are losing. Well, it's because the, the bigger ones are holding it up. So like Apple dropping, Tesla dropping. Okay, that means what happens when Apple and Tesla drops? Well, people rotate to NVIDIA and AMD. A uh, NVIDIA is such a big weight that it can hold it up. Microsoft, or I mean, it's Amazon. Amazon seeing a pretty good move as well. So you're seeing it overall hold up in this area, curl up positive territory. We can see that positivity come in. Uh, Tesla is still within this consolidation, so we'll have to see if something happens there. How cooked am I? Maybe a little bit, right? You want you want to make sure this is you know breaking to the upside. You want to make sure that you know that 180.92 is a very good resistance level. So we're going to build in front of it. This is a good sign for next week if we just remain at this level, see some consolidation still at this area, because this means next week we could see that push. That's the bad part about, you know, taking too close out of expiration. We could just be seeing, you know, this pull down for today, build liquidity and then pop next week. No great plays, really. Yeah, there's nothing really too amazing here. I would say Amazon has a little bit more push left in it. But how long is that going to last? It actually could probably top out as of right now. I can pay attention to my week, my daily ranges here. Uh, we have a little bit room left on it. Where's the weekly range for Amazon? Well, we have a little bit room left on it, but that's really not much higher. So your your risk here is like, or your reward could be here, but your risk is down here by in, or down here by end of day. So just be a little careful out there, guys. I know some stocks look different. I think we really could see that last rotation into Nvidia. I I really think that Nvidia wants to get to a thousand before we see it sell off. That euphoric moment is most likely coming. But it doesn't have to. We're still just going to follow the price action. This was a good trade setup we gave on Microsoft. Seeing that actually cross up, you know, use that bottom side of the weekly expected move that we gave you uh, over here on for Microsoft. Boom. On YouTube, we gave you that out. Boom. Look at that. Support, support, support. Now we can see if it takes these back. Does it curl up positive territory into next week? So into next week, we can see if this wants to curl up. And that would be a sign that it wants to head higher. Mara actually heading pretty good move here, honestly. One that people are looking at, Arm. This one's been suffering a little bit. Um, if anything, this would be the one that I'm trapped in. I have a, I have another couple weeks left on this one, but you can see if this curls up positive territory. Um, 
you know, we wanted to test this base again. Okay, we'll make another point of divergence. That seems to be what happened here, down here on the RSI. Seems to be what's happening down here on the MACD. So you actually do have triple divergence down here at these levels. Mara could actually see a big move here. Or not Mara, sorry. Arm could see a big move here. Um, and as long as NVIDIA keeps making this move, that's that's pretty probable to happen. Super mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get I'll get up. Get, give me a second. Oh, that's good. Oh, let me see. What did uh You're talking about the gap on the spy? Talk about this. Oh, 447. So all the way down 497. Um I would say we're going to look at those monthly ranges, right? So after this weekend, uh, those monthly ranges will come out on Patreon and we can start to think about that, maybe talk about it over the weekend. But as of right now, you're just seeing if you want to come down to this gap, it would have made sense to do that to this is why I'm saying the market, if it wanted a pullback somewhere, a pullback in here would have been nice, right? We get these divergences that pulls us down to this area. Now we can start to climb our way back up, right? But that didn't happen. Now we're getting overextended again. That's why I'm a little bit worried going into April. I think that we are going to see some kind of correction in April at some point now. So we said, you know, March would be very, very trappy. All time highs a bunch. Guess what? March is very, very trappy. We get all time highs a bunch. And uh, now we're seeing that go up. So a bunch of traps, right? And we called a lot of these. So we did pretty well with this. And so now we're seeing curl up positive territory. What happens? New high, right? New high again. Now we're creating a divergence that kind of wiped. It kind of wiped out the other ones, right? So now you have to pay attention to a new one. Uh, that's what I would say. Now you still have the divergences here. This didn't really exceed this too high. You still have these divergences on the RSI. Just uh, the nearest price action, you're most likely to see another one like this before we actually see that fade down. Uh, volatility, I do want to keep my eye on. Small little double bottom divergence here. Uh, just want to see if that breaks down further throughout the day or if that selling starts to escalate. The thing is, it's like volatility is very, very tight. So things can get a little bit ugly here um, over the next few weeks. But you see the dollar giving you two hour divergence. We can see some kind of pop here, to be honest. Um, so we want to pay attention, even though the VIX is showing us double bottom. I mean, the price action here, if this just crosses in positive territory, what happens every time we make a new high? I think the VIX is being weird and the bonds are being weird, but the VIX just tells you the fear is pretty much sucked out of this market. The bond market telling you, uh, yeah, we, we need to force the Fed to do something. That's what this means. We need to force the Fed to do something. Something is sick or... Um, or they're just like, hey, you need to take care of the problem or we're going to push these rates down. That would be very, very bad. So pretty much I think this is saying like, hey, we're going to break these these rates down unless you raise them because we're worried inflation's ticking up. So they're going to force their hand and make them, you know, break this down, raise those rates. That would take care of the inflation we're seeing tick up just a little bit. And then at the same time, this is also saying, hey, something in the system might be broken. So it's kind of two things I would say here. This is telling you, hey, we know something's broken out there. There's banks underwater, blah, blah, blah. And uh, yeah, we're going to force these rates down or else the whole economy is going to be just gone. I don't necessarily look at that indicator now. Just seeing here, see that drop off a little bit. And yeah, I see that it's like spy on the daily. You, you have to know that a big drop is coming. You don't just do this for long periods of time uh, with no 5% or even 10% pullback, right? So it's like, that's why I'm saying if it came up to here, pulled back, that would make a lot of sense to go higher. But as of right now, you have no structure to hold you up if you start to fall. You really don't. You start to see that selling come in. Well, 
you can come all the way down to here first. You can come all the way down to 460, 562 in like a, in like a month or two just because this was a whole month of just this was a whole multiple months ever since like what October we don't have any real structure in this overall move so a little bit worrisome I still think Nvidia has that shot to go above a thousand I really do even though we're seeing that fade back down throughout the day right now um I still think it has a good shot I would just look for this two hour to fully curl up that's when I really think that we're going to obviously see a thousand. Um, but as of right now, if this uh, isn't able to break to the upside, you have to say this might continue going on into this week, especially if people are still rebalancing and things like that. But I'd assume um, we're going to start to see strong moves going into next week. But we do have that big event tomorrow, PCE. We have Jerome Powell talking. So we're going to go live for the first talk that he gives and see what happens from that. But yeah, say good morning. Good morning, Ari. Welcome, local Brada. PE doesn't matter with the momentum. Yeah, I don't pay attention to PE too often. Um, sometimes if you'll see like beatdowns, though, you can look at PE just to give yourself a little bit more confidence. Good morning, little one. Thank you, Hector. She appreciates it. This one here, the 30 minute definitely able to cross, right? The 30 minute definitely crossing right now on um, Apple. So you have to be a little bit cautious, right? This might tell you, hey, you might want to get out of anything to the upside because I could see some downside here before I want to base out. Yeah, so overall, you you still want to, if you get the three to five reasons, right? So you took the course, so three to five reasons to take a trade. If you can formulate those reasons, not force them. If you see those reasons in front of you, try not to force it, right? You want to see those reasons in front of you, like, um, like selling out of this at this point, you'd say, well, I'm still positive at this point, so I could see that curl up. Maybe this is a liquidity grab, right? So this is still a good trade setup. We know we're going to see pullbacks. Maybe that turns right back around. But I could say, hey, if this starts to go negative, then I know, okay, now I need to get out of this trade, right? So um, as far as like afraid of fake outs and things like that, if it's a big time frame, you just want to make sure you're taking it uh, pretty far out, I would say. You know, if you're looking at a daily or something like that, uh, I'll just, I mean, uh, the reason you want to take far out stuff is once you see structure, you can look at Apple Imagine if you just took calls a month out for Apple after you saw this triple divergence confirm. Well, right here, you would have been taking a bunch of calls. You might have been faked out the, the next the next day. But if you would have held for that entire month, boom, 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 you see uh, by end of December, you're all the way up at 192 from 177. So it's a good trade overall. But other than that, if you don't see structure, you're seeing this curl up into positive territory. It can curl down, but just know those confirmations are overall what you're looking for. You want some confirmations to the upside. Make sure things are confirming and things like that as well. I'm trying to think about exactly how to. Volatility and, and you say volatility at its highest. Um we're not necessarily seeing volatility very, very high at this point, right? Still at 13. NVIDIA going green today. It was green for a little while there. It kind of gave that up, didn't it? Now it's pretty much breaking even. So you still have potential because you weren't able to fully close above this high here. Um, you can really see, I mean, I'd say at least not strong, right? This doesn't look strong by any means. We curled up on the 30 minute. Is this going to just trickle up like this? See a reaction down? And then we see a divergence next week. We'll have to pay attention, but. Oh, volatility only at the moment. OK, OK, so volatility, if you see that tick up r right away, know that it opens up before the actual market. Um, this, I would say, is like a great opportunity for like a hedge, right? So this would be like a hedge play or something like that. But curling up positive territory yeah, with the VIX, you really want to make sure that the stock you're watching is doing a similar thing, right? If I see a 30 minute divergence on meta and i see a 30 minute divergence on the vix at the same time usually i would say even if i'm trading individual stocks 
I want to see that divergence on the SPY, and I want to see that divergence on the VIX at the same time. That's why I'm saying a two hour little bit deeper divergence would be very, very good. Why? Because then the SPY would have the opportunity to go a little bit higher, create that divergence at the same time. That's a very, very good thing. If the VIX has the divergence here, you know, to the downside, while the SPY has the divergence to the upside, good shot that we're going to see that volatility come back in. That's that's a better way maybe to answer that. Trading like water today. Good job, Robert. Love to hear it. And Jules, hopefully NVIDIA is helping you out a little bit here. Starting to go negative at this point. Nothing too crazy with NVIDIA. Just what you want to see here is, remember this 15 minute? Remember this 15 minute we were talking about if you consolidate here, maybe you get that actual retest of the 20 day moving average. So maybe we see something like this happen, maybe even cut a little bit lower. And then we see some kind of divergence down here going on into next week. So I would pay attention to that throughout the day. If we see weakness, if we see positivity, look for that two hour to curl up. I don't have Discord. I have Patreon right now. We're thinking about adding Discord later. It's just with my baby girl, I don't have the most time. Okay, so I appreciate you asking, but uh, we don't really have a Discord at this moment. But on Patreon, we give trade setups and things like that. We give daily expected moves on there. So you actually have daily expected moves for all of these uh, stocks that we do cover on this channel over on Patreon. And Palantir, is this really dropping off? Oh, sheesh. So where we could have saw this trade, the 30 minute divergence up here is something to point out. You have that right before you fall. We said, hey, if this wants to, you want to see that curl up positive territory, it flags, drops down a little bit. Jules, thank you so much for subscribing. But you see 30 minute divergence here, able to curl over your real, really good confirmation. You can hold this move. Two hour was able to cross yesterday. So that would tell you, hey, downside is uh, pretty probable here. And this is pretty much an area I would pay attention to, like $23 left head, right shoulder forming. Maybe we come down to that area, get a bounce, and then see that start to fail. So I would just really be paying attention to this base here around that $23. $522? Almost 4K subs. Yeah, that's right. Let's go look. 522. Wait. Zero DT trades by 522. What'd you take at 522? Put or call. I mean, this is nothing to be worried about at this point. The only thing that kind of shakes us up is the Tesla and the Apple trades as of right now. Uh, but you can see it a little bit on here. You can see like how it's not too worrisome. You're not even breaking below this level here. You're just grabbing good liquidity, I think, at this point. Maybe it wants to just start to head higher. So if this two hour would cross down, yeah, then then we're definitely thinking, hey, this thing's probably heading lower. Uh, but until that happens, not too worried about it. Uh, I just really think that the 30 minute, yeah, it curled down. I think that this will curl back up into positive territory. But if it goes negative, I might get out of the trade for a moment, right? I might be out of the trade. I have plenty of time. I can add back into it. So I can either add back into it here. I can get out, see that base out again, curl back up. Maybe I get in here. So I just want to pay attention to that going forward. But that's how I see it this morning. Apple looking like it needs to dip down and grab some liquidity before actually heading higher. Um, if it starts to cross over to the downside uh, into negative territory, then this might have been a fake out at that point. SPY does look pretty good from the two hour perspective. I, I would expect us to consolidate around this area for just a moment here. And then maybe we see that push towards the end of the day. So it's more next week that I'm paying attention to at this point, um, since we're not seeing positivity across the board. If you got that positivity from Apple and Tesla with that those strong moves, we could have seen, you know, the SPY gap up and go up to this level, come up into here. And we see that breakdown early on today. So salutations, Gabo. So yeah, that, that's overall why I'm like, now it seems like we might just consolidate, have nothing but a dud day, and then see that start to rip to the upside next week, um, or start to tear down. So we have to be open to both scenarios. We don't know what Jerome Powell's going to say tomorrow. I'm just thinking he's going to keep uh, a very similar tone to what he's kept a lot lately. Thanks, bro. You're the best. Thank you, Pitching Academy, for showing up today. Appreciate you being here, liking the video, subscribing. You guys are great.
Right now I'm trying to make sure I have time for those one-on-ones. I'm realizing that my time is just very, very limited. So I'm making, I'm going to, I'm not going to say that for Patreon right now because my time is so limited these days. You know, I'm just tired, man. I'm tired. We've been going through it these days, I feel like. And that's why I don't want to like keep saying, oh, we're going to do this on Patreon at the end of April, right? And then not be able to do it because of my time. So I'm going to stop saying that for a little bit, but we'll keep it in mind going into uh, the end of April there. Hey, Rose, how you doing? Has GDP been released yet? I'm assuming so. I'm not going to lie. Just totally blanking on a lot of things today. GDP growth rate 3.4. Previous 4.9. Consensus 3.2. Forecast 3.2. So that is good news. Um, And we could see this push higher. Profit. Corporate profits coming in higher. Initial job claims coming down. A little bit inflationary there. The PMI down a little bit, 41.4 Chicago PMI, that is. Michigan consumer sentiment higher. So this is, these are pretty good news across the board. Kansas Fed Composite Index. Hey, that's me. I think tomorrow is going to be your big day, and then Monday you do have PMI as well coming out. But remember, this could last all the way up until CPI. So April 10th, that's an important one to mark that this could last. This could last past that. That's why we're trading like water, right? We're not getting overly bearish. We're just saying moments where those trade setups are there. And uh, something that had a trade setup was, uh, what was it? It was, we just looked at it. That trade setup to the downside that led to the crossing down. Like Palantir, yeah. So like like little trades like this are setting up everywhere. 30-minute divergence crashes down a little bit. You get out of the position. Like you just want to keep trading like water, in my opinion. Until we see the like break below the 20, then we can start to say, all right, now we can use that bear market strategy you learned over on that course. Till then, we want to be very quick with it. And in a bear market, you still want to be quick, by the way. It's a very, very good habit for a bear market to just be like, okay, catch these moves. Then when I see daily divergence, I know I can hold it a little longer. I shorted DAX at all time high looking for a dip. And that's very possible. Let's see how this looks on the daily scale, though. Oh, my God. Yeah, you can see how this is just not healthy at this point. Like, look at that. That's just not, that's not healthy at all. Jesus, I can't even look at that for too long, man. Do do do. Ooh, that's not good, Pitching Academy. That is not a good thing to be said. Downgrades are never a good thing. <laughs> Nvidia is starting to go green again. We'll have to see if this is actually going to do it. I, I that's why I'm really saying two hour. I'm not trying to like. I, I'm going to be open to both ways. So the two hour is the easiest way, right? If I see like two strong bars here, it's going to cross. Then right here, maybe that entry point comes in. Then maybe we go to a thousand next week, and then we see that fall off next week, or maybe that continues on into CPI April 10th. So I'm open to everything. Curling up again, positive territory. What happens every time the cur- the two hour curls up positive territory? We see positivity. So we haven't lost the 20 yet, so I'm not too worried about this. Finally positive on AMD. Good job. Good job. You held through the storm. Pretty sure the geopolitical climate disagrees with that analyst. 
Yeah, AMD seeing that that good, 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 a pretty good move here is what I would say. Now the daily, if that's able to cross up for AMD, it's been beat down. It's been t- pulled back for a, quite a while compared to Nvidia. Right? It looks like Nvidia could have a little push in it. AMD could have a big one in it. Uh, I just still am open to this actually breaking down using this liquidity. This liquidity is so good in here now that you have to think this is going to be important in the future. Okay, so if we start to break to the upside, look at that. We're starting to fail again right at this level. So we need this to break through, and then we could see some kind of big head and shoulders to grab liquidity again. So we still are struggling at the same level on AMD over and over and over again. Go look over at Meta real quick. Actually, Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. Amazon, something to look at here. 30 minute divergence forming again. Um, so, will this fade throughout the day? We will have to see. Here. Matterport. I don't think I've looked at that. I'll take a quick look. Oh my gosh. That's some that's some penny stock bullsh right there. No divergences really, nothing right here. Just popping. Uh, looks like it, we reject around the 200 every time, though. So if you're counting on this being a prolonged strong move, um, I would say watch out. The 200 is where we've seen resistance over and over. Sure, we break through it, but we've never been able to hold it. No, that's just that's too small. Um, so most of the time I'm looking with you guys, so I would I would count that time, and then um, I kind of just keep an eye on things the rest of the day. See if there's a, if there's no trade set up, I'll hang out a little bit longer. Um, but for the most part, I'll go away, give myself an hour and a half at least in the middle of the day to do whatever. I went to the gym yesterday, things like that. And then I just like to pay attention to the closing. So the last like 30 minutes or so. But yesterday I was busy again. I was able to actually go to the gym too, though. So I went to the gym which never gets to happen. So I was awesome. I really appreciated that happening. But um, I noticed at the end of the day, I was looking and I was like, oh my gosh, look at that spy bar. That spy bar is crazy. Like, look at that bar. That's crazy. Boom. So you'd have to assume strength is coming. Yeah, I pretty much, I have everything on my phone all the time. So I'm I'm doing I'm pretty much just watching stuff and I have uh, my new Google phone, right? My new my I'm switched. I switched to Android and it's a great decision because there's like a widget where I can just have stocks up on my phone without having to go into any app. I can like see the stock so I can like leave it on that area and see price moves and stuff just by going like this. I don't have to like open an app or anything. Every 15 minutes or so, just peek at that, you know. 150 people in here. Good job, guys. Way to like the video so we can get more and more people in here. Thank you guys for joining me this morning. Steve, which one was your biggest winning stock? I missed that. Weird when the Vix, Dixie, and uh, Spy are all green at the same time. Yeah, that's fishy, but you know that volatility can go up um, based on buying as well. Um, it is just, you know, we can have volatile moves up. We can have volatile moves down um, for the most part. This one here. Uh, could be could be ticking up right we see that small divergence there and thanks guys for liking i see that heart moving so yeah i'd say most of the time a lot of my trades are set up like this where i can like take a trade during the day and then i can hold it for a few days usually mine takes them a few days to play out and i can just monitor them like lightly i don't have to sit and be like a hawk on it staring at it i just like lightly pay attention to any signals of weakness so like Apple looking at this trade, the signal for weakness here was a five minute, you know, divergence, which I didn't put too much weight behind, but apparently I should have. And that's perfectly fine. You know, it happens. But um, this just gapping down like that, that's kind of crazy after this really, really strong move. Um, so but this divergence here would give me a signal like, hey, maybe I do want to get out of this position at this level. 
because there is divergence, but um, usually a five minute divergence doesn't scare me out of stuff. Yeah, it's not the best thing to watch the market the entire day. You want to be very confident with the trades you select. That's why in the course, it's like, you know, if you want to be very confident, then you would only take trades where you can find five good reasons to take the trade. So if you can find those five good reasons, that would just be like, OK, now uh, now I can remain in that move. I don't have to worry about it too much. Sure, you want to monitor it, but it doesn't mean it has to absorb your entire day, because if you keep looking around the market when you take a trade, like let's say you take a call here and then Google shows you divergence up here. Amazon shows you divergence. The VIX shows you divergence. But guess what? Apple pops that divergence fails Google and then pull back a little bit uh, while Apple pops. It can it can get you out of some good trades. Yeah, so try not to try not to watch it too much, right? Not too much. Doesn't mean you can't monitor it. It's like so a lot of the time. So let's say let's say this this crosses over to the downside, right? Let's say I'm only trading Apple. Let's say I really like to trade Apple. Okay, well this crosses to the downside. Maybe I took that little trade up in here, right? We see some profit come in, and then we see this trickling down. Well, once this happens, if I'm really just saying I just want to trade Apple. This already happened. I took my profit. I only want to trade Apple. Well, I can wait now. I can literally not look at the market for probably two whole days and then look for this trade setup down here that caused that 15 and 30 minute divergence. And then we see that cross up. So you realize you can take a trade, literally take like two days just working at your other job or something. And then you could find that next play on a stock right here. Now, if you're trying to find multiple trades all day, yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot of work. And you can get mentally tired, especially because the more of those trades you take, um, you know, especially if they're going really well, you might think every single one's going to go well. So it's good to just come in fresh to every trade. Take your time with it. Rebalancing or selling today. Do you know anything about that? Yeah, so they're they're rebalancing for the most part for Q1. So that just tells you like yesterday. Uh, people were probably buying into Apple. It's a cheap price and things like that. But as they rotate back into NVIDIA, back into AMD, look at that buy signal coming up. Um, this could be a sign that AMD and NVIDIA are going to start to pop again. And we're going to see Tesla and Apple suffer a little bit. Um, that's happened for a while now. Dang it. I just hit the delete button on Apple. That's that's not good. You guys, that's bad. We can't we can't get rid of Apple. So yeah, it's just rotation, but that just means, you know, they're either they're taking profit on the ones they want to take profit on and looking for better opportunities. Now they're seeing that opportunity in Apple for a moment, but now they're saying, hey, AMD looks pretty good at this price. So let's buy that up. And they're like, eh, NVIDIA is still not the best, but AMD looks pretty good. So the thing that's surprising, Amazon actually seeing this huge move a little bit surprising, really thought, really thought we could like consolidate still and then see that going on into next week. but. Mara, look at that thing. Boom, boom, boom. Look how that's playing out. Good job. Look at that. Yeah, that's that's a very good point, Aaron. But yeah, you can get real you can get you can drive yourself nuts just staring at stocks all day. That's why I'll have it up on my computer or something and uh, for the most part, just be like, I'll walk by, look at it. I have it on my phone if I really am nervous about something. But if I'm nervous about something, let me just be confident and maybe set, you know, some kind of alert um, for a price target where that MACD could cross over. Right. So say like Apple, if I was nervous about this. Right. And I know the two hours really important. We're seeing some selling come in. All right. Well, if I'm nervous about this, I could just say, OK, this breaks down. Maybe once I break through and actually close below 169.80, I need to think about being out of that position because we could see further downside and this could cross over. So I could set it right here and just say, I'm not even going to watch this. If it just comes down to here, uh, I'm out of that position and just kind of be like bummed out for a little bit, but looking for the next trade, um, taking a little break there. There's like plenty of different ways you can do stuff in the market, guys. It's pretty pretty awesome honestly there's like a hundred a thousand a million different things that people can do
I was hoping. Gotta, let me email this guy back. Oh, thank you guys for purchasing the course this morning, Scott. Thank you, Susanna. Nasser, thank you so much for buying that course this morning. I think you're really going to enjoy it, and you get to take it over the weekend, and we might very well be in a bear market come the beginning of this month. So I'm just going to write Craig back an email real quick. Here we go. Can't access course. It does not. Up my own course. Oh. I just kind of email him back about the course real quick. Sorry guys, had to write an email. All right, and we're back. Sorry about that. We are here. Oh. All right, let's see what is going on across the board. AMD still seeing a strong move. Actually able to break above this level. Oh my God, don't wick out. Jesus, please don't wick out. Oh my God, don't wick out. It keeps wicking out, guys. I think Microsoft could be a good opportunity, right? Two hour looks like near positive territory. Could see a push upward from here. Um, I think this is actually a decent opportunity going forward. Um, it just it just looks good from a risk to reward perspective. Now you're going to get new weekly ranges and that weekly range is probably going to be somewhere around this high. Right. So most likely we could see that two hour push Then we get outside of that range and then we could see um, if it's able to do something up in here. So just one that I'm paying attention to. If it can curl up positive territory, I can target that weekly expected move next week. Um, we're going to be adding Microsoft to Patreon very, very soon. Uh, hopefully in April, if we can hit 100 members, we'll be adding Microsoft, Google and one other stock that you guys um, that you guys would like over on Patreon. Doesn't mean we're going to cover it all the time in the videos, but for the most part, we'll be uh, adding that to Patreon there. SMCI. OK, still not seeing that strength come in. Really looks like it wants to maybe pull back down here, but kind of flagging in this area. That'll be interesting. Oh, dang. Sometimes my headphones sit on that nub on the top of my hat and it gives me a headache. Is volatility seeing that pop yet? See, volatility is not even popping that high. Dollar looks like it wants to fade down at some point. Weird. Weird, weird, weird.
two people. Yeah, this this is uh What is this? Well, okay. all right. So Apple, with this move down, uh, this is actually saying be a little bit more cautious here, right? As we approach down in this area, yes, we can base out from there and see an upward move. Uh, we're going to use this liquidity in another way. We could just do something like this and see that break down. So a little bit worried about Apple as of right now, um, even the two hour you know, just looking like it wants to curl down negative territory. Now, if, if that's brief or something like that, we're trading like water, right? But um, if we start to break through this level, it means that, you know, things are going to look pretty bad. So this did shake me out. We'll see if that's able to curl back up. I can get right back in the position. So nothing about this is too bad, right? Didn't lose too much because we're taking pretty far out options and we gained some positivity here. So at this point, look for this to come down to here. That's where we could see that curl back up, maybe see a 30 minute curl back up into positive territory. What that would do, especially if you come down to this level, is create another point of divergence right here, right by that center line. Uh, but you got to be a little cautious. That two hour rolling over, it really looks like this might want to break. And the other thing I was thinking was Google. Google really showing that this might be the top, you know, with these divergences or at least some kind of uh, lower high at this point, right? Not saying like a new all time high top or anything. I'm just saying like this looks very, very poor from Google. Even if it gets that reaction up, you can see those divergences very close to the center line. This it just tells you with some bad news, Google's trend can flip to negative very, very quickly. Man, volatility. You do have a divergence here on the RSI. I wonder if that's on the MACD. Flat on the MACD. Divergence on the RSI right here on a 30 minute, which means that two hours is going to roll up. We're already seeing that it's rolled up. Um, you do have a small point of divergence here between these two levels. So volatility can come back in, but just know there could be some kind of reaction from volatility, right? We could see that react up and then curl back down and then curl back up. This could go all the way to the 10th. Look at that. Uh, all the way to the 10th of April where we do get CPI. Now we're seeing TLT get that positivity again. You guys know this is why I'm like scared some kind of black swan is happening. Uh, why would we see this huge flocking to TLT? Is this just them? Is this people running to safety because they know something is broken? Is this them saying we need to lower these rates quickly because something is broken? Or are they just trying to force the Fed's hand? Rum small moves, SMCI has the most obvious has the most obvious head and shoulders. If I've ever seen one, let's go see. Let's go see if SMCI does. The heck is that bad boy? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You'd have to say, pretty obvious, right? Boom. 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 Uh, I'd say this is the base right in here. This would actually be very, very cool because uh, if this starts to break down, you have very good levels to pay attention to, even with this low. So if it breaks through, look for that to hold up. Maybe we come up into here. We actually see that form some resistance here, and then we see that ABC pattern down. You're going to cut through this like butter if we start to drop, guys. If we start to drop significantly for a bad reason, you're going to see this really cut through because, look, there's nothing to hold you up. The only place that can hold you up is maybe this little part here, this little part here. So if we start to lose that, you could get some kind of bounce, but is that just going to reject from that level? So pretty, pretty dang awesome. Uh, you know, the levels we're paying attention to here, just the high and uh, well, this gap is actually like right here. So that gap fill down there. Hit 
and referrals to get the Robin Hood gold plated card. I don't even know what that is. I'm not trying to get any cards from anyone or anything like that. I'm not referring people to. I don't think Robin Hood's like the best. I think it's fine for beginners and things like that for fun plays. But um, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if I'd really be like, oh, yeah, put put 20, put $50,000 right now into Robin Hood and start trading. I don't know about that. Apple, that is very interesting that Apple's just rejecting here. Maybe it gets a daily divergence before earnings or something, but uh, that is, as far as right now goes, that is rejecting. We'll have to see if the 30-minute can curl back up, but it's just interesting. You just have different stuff going on across the way. Ooh, volatility now up 2%. Let's look at the daily here. Okay, so that five's right there. We need to start climbing with some volatility here. Two hour, if that can go positive, eh, this might be the moment, guys. We might actually be experiencing the moment if this is able to cross positive, cross through this zone, cross through this trend right here. Maybe we do something like this, and then we see volatility's back. I mean, you could just probably like look up something like that, honestly. Okay, uh, the Class A series, G-O-O-G-L, shares provide voting power. They are likely to perform the, the same over time with regards to the stock price. Both, both get um, dividends. The only thing that G-O-O-G-L gives is uh, voting power. Let me make sure Teachable's working. Someone's saying Teachable's being a little funky. Sometimes it is. I the crying. All right, guys, I'm back. So I'm trying to juggle like a million things at once here. Just juggling over here, man. Okay, cool. All right, we are good to go on all of this. I am back with you guys in the chat. I promise. I am here now. I am focused on the stock market. I think it's still open. Mara is exploding. Yeah, this is that uh, ABC pattern we were kind of talking about actually playing out to the upside the target on this is the upside of this range which is very interesting because you could actually see structure 
you know, if we actually go like something like that, we actually could see structure for Mara to head higher. Apple not looking pretty. Gosh, that was such a good looking trade. And then it just does this. But it still could be a liquidity grab. I haven't broken through this level. I just say I'm I'm getting out of it and going to get right back in. Mara was my play of the week. Play of the week with Matthew Stankowitz. Oh, Vassile messaged a bunch. What's going on with the US 30? Let me check. No. Yeah, whatever. Not good things. Double top. I never know which one to look at when I look at that stuff, so I just don't even pay attention to it. Something more so I'm paying attention to is the the trend up here and the futures and things like that. Yeah, I've played with a lot of you know people, soccer players from all around the world, so got pretty good at pronouncing names, but I still butcher a lot. Uh, Phantom Candles? Is that like the... I'm sure. Oh. Yeah, that that's probably just not something I would even confuse myself with personally. I'd just be like, that doesn't even really make sense to me. So gonna be honest, it just it does not like help me in any way. So very Buddhist about it. I have a Buddhist tattoo. Just if it's not gonna help me, if it's gonna make my life harder, I'm just gonna ignore it. That's a very true, Carlos. You guys I know we're getting excited. Mara looking good. Remember to trade like water. This can be ripped away at any time. If you want to look at a stock that is telling you it'll be ripped away. Well, actually, we should probably go look at Microsoft and look at this triple divergence that just confirmed. OK, so we do have triple divergence that confirmed on Microsoft. Yeah, it looks decent from a trading perspective to see a positive move. We haven't seen that two hour curl up yet. So this is telling you right now, boom, triple divergence. You know the last time we saw a triple divergence this clean? Do you guys know? Uh, let's see in the chat. When do you guys think the last time that we saw a triple divergence, maybe it was a little cleaner the last time, but triple divergence like this and all these divergences like this on the RSI. When's the last time we saw that? Three, two, one. Apple before we saw this huge big run. Look at this triple divergence. Does this not look eerily similar to Microsoft right now. Okay, now Microsoft curling over just the other way, right? Oh, sorry about that, just the other way. So this is telling you what happened to Apple here, boom, what can happen to Microsoft, boom. So that's that's why trading like water is important. It doesn't mean we can't see upside moves, right? You just want to make sure to be patient, take profit, Look for this two hour to curl up positive territory. I'm not saying that this is all going to crash down right now. I'm just saying I'm mainly thinking there's going to be maybe one more push left in it. Get the spy to another new all time high. And then we see that just ripped away. Carlos got it. It's Apple. Uh, anybody else read that Swift system is going to crypto based platform? Really? Uh, and current thoughts on NVIDIA. It looks OK. I'm just seeing if this two hour wants to curl up. I, I really think that, you know, people are going to start to say like, oh, now there's no way it's hitting a thousand. It's not hitting a thousand. It's not hitting. And then it goes and hits a thousand next week. I, I still think that's definitely possible um, until we lose the 20, which is where this 88160 is. This this is the 20 on the daily scale till we start to lose that and close below it on the daily scale. I'm, I'm not worried about NVIDIA. And I would even say this, even if we close down at this level, we want to break through 840, right? 840, a very important level to break through. Carlos, go further. Carlos, explain what you're saying to me. Maybe I'm tired. Maybe I haven't had enough coffee, but explain a little bit more. I love conspiracies. 
My conspiracy, my biggest conspiracy is we're going to go through a cyber attack that is going to try to control us to start the next civil war. That's the craziest conspiracy. <laughs> uh, as I sip my coffee on my computer, I must not be that worried about that, to be honest. Thank you guys for joining. Still 146 of us in here. Make sure we're hitting that like button. The more people, the merrier in this channel. The more people, the more ideas, the more stocks we get to look at. He meant A, B, C, D move. Oh. Oh, oh sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to need another cup of coffee. Um, I don't know, Robert. I saw that Obama movie. <laughs> saw that Obama movie. And uh, at the same time that that, well, Obama, like, helped produce a movie or whatever. And that's scary because it's like if an old president would know exactly how it would happen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Let's talk about that. So where was that bridge again? Was that? Yeah, Baltimore had uh, shipping crates or whatever uh, crash into the bridge and stuff, right? And then and then uh, in the actual movie, it had shipping crates, like shipping. What is it? Shipping boats, shipping crates, whatever. The big shipping container, massive boats or whatever. They were crashing into the shore in the movie. In real life, they're crashing into bridges. I think that's worse. Let's say we are in a swing position and can't cover because we have no internet at all. Will they still make you pay for it after we get the internet back? Connie, that is that is very, very sweet. If if we have a cyber attack that hits the entire country, um it, it's it's literally the walking dead out there. They're like, do not be convinced. Like you might go through a situation where the government's like, stay in your home. That's probably the last thing you want to do. You want to get out of the cities and go somewhere safe. Because if you think that crime is bad now, now imagine crime is bad and no one can use a cell phone. No one can call the cops. No one can video. No one can post anything. That's that's your your last concern in the world will be ah did i just lose that thousand dollar call <laughs> not not and i'm not like making funny i just think that that's um that that's really what you need to probably think about there but we don't you know that's that's po the other thing is it's like who is it it was like the oh whatever that big enterprise is that said like oh this is how a virus would spread throughout the whole country and then like six months later or a year later, we had COVID. That same company said, this is how a cyber attack would affect the whole country about six months ago. <laughs> for the clue, watch for a clue on that. Watch Last of Us. Yeah, watch those zombies. All right, NVIDIA still making that move higher. Let's let's actually do some work here today, right? We want to see AMD starting to fade that a little bit. Oh, look at that. God, AMD, I swear. Like, are you... This is going to be bad if it breaks down, guys. This is a lot of liquidity built in here. Look how long we have been in this area. This is this is scary to the, to the point where it's like you, you see these reactions. So as we build more liquidity, we could see huge wicks up, huge wicks down, like... So you really want to see, is this just going to break through? I would maybe even do something like this, right? Just create some sort of line down here, some sort of uh, line up here, kind of giving you that and be like, okay, well, I, at this point, it's like I might even get rid of this structure and just say, look at that. False break, false break. Which way are we going? False break again. My God. 100 shares but yeah you're right it would probably be the, my last concern if we do go through a cyber attack yeah and, and pretty much it's like the cyber attack goes you lose everything and everyone starts to fight for food they say diversities are your number one on your trade checklist uh yeah i i really do like having divergences um as far as like bear market goes when paying attention to the ranges i would say the two most important things are which is funny you say divergences are the important thing 
what what do we look at to get those divergences? If we don't have MACD and RSI, we can't see divergences. So actually, MACD and RSI are probably the two most important things because if you don't have those on your chart, you're not going to see anything, right? But after that, what do you pay attention to? Uh, the divergences, yes. So you pay attention to divergences first. At least that's how uh, mine would go. I really like them. And then I'll pay attention to weekly range. And then I'll pay attention to support level or a resistance level around that area. And then I'll also maybe look at fundamentals. What could be happening tomorrow? Um, are we in a negative trend? All those things can come up. I can look at the VIX, see if we're about to see a pop if I see 30 minute divergence on the SPY. All those things you can put together. But divergence is something that I really, really look for. That slowing in momentum when I'm looking to get into a uh, possible trade. Something very, very good to look for, 30-minute divergence. If Even if I'm trading a two-hour 30-minute divergence, I can get in a little bit better position and take um, that chance because I know the momentum is dying out and that'll curl up the two-hour. Now, the thing with that you have to pay attention to is the two-hour could just get some kind of little pop. You usually want to take profit because it could come make a two-hour divergence, right? So that's how I see it. Um, now, unless you're in a positive trend on the two-hour, so one would be... I think it was Microsoft. So Microsoft here, you have little 15 minute divergences down here, right? You have a few little divergences at this level. So what this tells me is, hey, it might be a good area to enter, but um, I know the daily scale, this looks bad. There's no divergence, but this can say, hey, if the two hour curls up, I have a good shot to test this high. So now I can say, okay, this might be a little more positive, not just some kind of dead cat bounce or something like that. Uh, but then you want to say, do I really want to take calls when the daily looks like this? Look at that. So I would be very, very skeptical. You guys know my rule. If we see that crossing down of the MACD, especially when it has divergences, but if you see that crossing down of the MACD, I don't fight against that daily, that daily momentum. Microsoft really telling you at this moment, if this really want, if you want to follow the technicals to a T, Microsoft is saying, I'm not going to make a new high. And, th and that's where you have to take with a grain of salt. You have to be like, you, you know, like you guys are saying, uh, the rebalancing of stuff. Is this just rebalancing and it looks bad on a chart right now? Well, I really like to follow technicals, so I'm not going to mess around with this. I'm just going to say, hey, let me let me just position myself according to this based on Microsoft. And then if I do see those upward moves, OK, I can just get out of that position look for a point up here for two hour divergence and then I can get right back in. But the point here is just look at Microsoft. This is a great setup. You can see all the divergences along these here. Now you don't have all three on the RSI, but you do have all three on the on the MACD there. Uh, not a very good sign. The last one that looked this clean was Apple before we saw like a 30 percent move. Right. So you don't want to mess around with this. We could just be going doing something like this and then we end up down in this area, go towards this liquidity. Maybe we even break down a little bit further because Microsoft has more structure. So you can hold up here. You can hold up here. We could test here and then we could start to see that turn around. So this one has more structure. It's the it's the NVIDIA's and the AMD's that I'm worried about because, look, there's no structure in this. It's like you have one point here, you have one point here, you have one point here. And it's just like, you know. And by the time you get to this point, what, you're down 30 percent. Palo Alto has not been looking very hot lately, but I'd understand. I would be very, very cautious here. OK, you're building a lot of liquidity and it looks very flaggy. Look at that. Look at that. There was an L in that word. Don't don't be thinking anything uh but you see this flag here boom we could come to the downside flag out now we see that next move so be a little bit careful here um as you're seeing volatility at extreme lows sure we can see this pop up I'm not saying we can't it's just i don't see a lot even as a swing trader right now you would want at least a closing bar i would even say above the 20 then you'd feel a little confident hey at least there's maybe a move to the 50 but as of right now you're crossed on this macd but you're not above the five, you're not above the 20, you are above the 200. So if you see that happen, there can be a move going on for a little bit there. Just be a little careful with it. This is not a day to take YOLO plays, guys. Today is not the day because we have some important stuff tomorrow.
Uh, call caller put on op- any options. I usually buy the shortest time I buy options in a bear market. When the bear market's here, I'll do two week plays. Um, sometimes I will do two week plays. Uh, but other than that, I'm buying about a month out. So anything that I have right now has um, a month out to expiration. Or I think now I have about three weeks. But yeah, Carlos, it's just a it's a good habit. Because if you make money a little bit slower, you can be a little bit risk averse. You can be a little bit more managed with your risk. You don't have to put so much behind it. You just like you can buy one even further out and just do what I do. And I take money when the money looks good. If I make 50 percent and I feel good about that, if I make 100 percent, I feel good about that. If I make 20 percent, I feel good about it. I'll just take my money in an environment like this. That's my cheetah girl. You laugh. Okay, good. Had to make sure. Oh, that's true. We haven't checked on this guy today. That good old Trump media. What is this? Truth social or something? I don't know. Let's look. Actually, I mean, technically, you're you're kind of consolidating by the center line here. I mean, if that 15 minute goes up, you could probably see this thing rip. Look at that. We'll call this a fluke and we'll say this line right here across the way. Just a tiny bit lower. Let's put it with the wick. Like if that would happen, you could probably see another push higher. How high would that be? You guys know I don't like these too much, but all right. $86 maybe. But you got you have to be so careful, guys. This is this is this could just go fill the gap, right? We break through this level. You come down to here, you break through that, you're going down to forty nine dollars. Um, so just just be a little careful. There's not a lot of price action on this, right? So maybe we can look for two hour, one hour curling up positive territory. Two hours still up there, so you have to be a little worried. <laughs> you got to be a little worried. All right, two hours still up there. Yeah, this was a really cool divergence in the past. You wanted to see this drop off. Look at this divergence here on the RSI actually giving you this one and this one. That's kind of cool. Damn, that thing is good. That thing's on fire, guys. Did you say any new bad news about Trump would drag it down? I mean, I'm I'm just going to be real with you, Willow. When do we not get bad news about Trump? I feel like, you know, the media is obsessed with showing us bad news about Trump. It's like all I see about Trump is always bad news. I never see anything good. And I'm like, I'm a guy that votes on policy. His policy's worked. That's all I got to say. Um, but anything I see about Trump is bad. So I, I just don't see how this. I, I don't see. I don't see Trump. I guess that's the way to put it. I don't see Trump news really affecting it unless it's related to technology and media. I would say that. I just, it's just like if someone says something bad about Trump, dude, they say something bad about Trump every 20 minutes. And like the reason I have this attitude towards it is just because I'm like, it's it's really getting old. It's really getting old. And like if you just look at the track record, it's like, look, at, look at Biden's America right now. It's It's just like it feels like the wool is being pulled over my eyes. When it comes to media, I think media is dead. I think if you're still watching the news on TV, you're you're probably not getting the right news. Some le- yeah, Willow. So some legitimate bad news around the stock itself. Like if there's, I don't know, even know if it's out yet, right? So delay in, uh, delay in the product, things like that. Uh, maybe when the product launch, you they will pay attention to things like that. So. If it's Truth Social and it's that app or whatever, then they'll they will look at potential downloads. They will look at advertising money. They'll look at all those things. Um, it's kind of like when Mark Zuckerberg tried to make that um, the new X or whatever. I don't even know what he called it, but it was like oh PC good feeling only, and it just failed immediately. Um, I think this is maybe supposed to be the opposite of that. I don't really know. I need to do more research on it. I can't trade this volume. I'm having more fun watching random people out the window. What the hell is happening outside your window? Honey, do you ever do spreads? Uh, not necessarily. Um, like b- before a big event, like say tomorrow, I'll buy 
um, like a hedge on volatility if I have any calls. So right now I have a hedge on volatility. So I have volatility that could, if it skyrockets because of this news over the weekend, um, your boy makes some money. But that's mainly just a hedge if I'm taking any calls. So it's not a huge position. Haven't had cable for a decade. Yeah, cable's dead. You want to go watch something on TV, like a fight or a football game? Just go to Twin Peaks. That's where that's where we go. Yeah, we need to go to Twin Peaks. Yo, that sounds really good. Ari, do you want to go to Twin Peaks today? Your boy might be going to Twin Peaks. Threads? Threads, I don't... I've, I've never looked at a thread. Um, you guys know I used to be decently big in the social media. I'm not... I think social media is sick, and I think, I think that we are going to see the trend reversal. I think we are going to see all these people who are trying to be TikTok stars and all that stuff. I think it's going to reverse and privacy is going to be the new social media. And that's why I'm going for privacy. I don't I mean, I have like a I don't have my old Instagram that had a bunch of followers. I don't have I don't I barely check Facebook for the most part. I just look for pictures of my friends, babies and things like that. Um I don't use Twitter. I have a Twitter just in case I need to look for some stock news really quick, but I don't use it. I don't have TikTok. I definitely don't have TikTok. Like I would not have TikTok on my phone. If if there's one app that I think they could send out a signal and mess with my insides, it's probably TikTok. And they don't even have to do that. They just show us really, really dumb content to our kids and then that affects them in that way. So Tesla, let's look at this real quick. Still within this uh, little selling here. It does look like it wants to go lower. It really does. The two hour here looks like it wants to curl down. Oh, properties real estate. Okay, we'll take a look at that. But yeah, this looks like it wants to curl down. If that curls down, just, just note that if we stay within this, right, we can uh, maybe get something like this to happen, okay? But other than that, if this curls down, goes negative, you have to say, oh, this trend might be over. This trend might be done. Yeah, I think we're about to get a culture shock, to be honest, so if you guys want my opinions. But I know we're not here for that, so we'll just keep doing some stock market analysis, right? If you guys ever want to do a fun political tray uh, live, that'd be fun and stuff, but... I just don't want anyone getting offended. I'm, I'm one of those guys that's like, vote for whoever you want, but I'll call you an idiot if you voted, if you didn't vote on policy. Hey, Laws, wish I had kept half. Oh, man, that's too bad. Look at this about to curl up on the spy. Look at this. This is, you know, if you guys are asking about the spy a bunch, I still think that push is left in us. Still think that push is left in us, even though Microsoft looking bad. Well, what if this just curls up, gives us another point? That's perfectly fine. We just want to check, is volatility spiking up? Not necessarily at this point. Not really spiking up. But is this the calm before the storm? Is this the fear being completely sucked out of the market at this point? Oh, crypto-related real estate. Let's give it a look. Proppy Bitcoin. Proppy USD. Let's do the Coinbase one. Is this even real? Am I looking at something real? <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, I think uh, most of the cryptos are going to go away in the next 10 years, and I think we'll be left with like Bitcoin, Ethereum, maybe Ripple and Cardano. I, th I think if you're trading anything like Dogecoin, Shiba, I think all those are going to be dead in a few years, like completely dead, like the uh, dot-com bubble where pl places just went to zero. Lucas, political debate channel. Actually, pretty good at it. Uh, what's your thoughts for the stock market tomorrow and next week? I still think that he won't change tone tomorrow. The only thing I'm worried about is a black swan. I know that's kind of crazy, for, but this is a moment where I'm worried. I'm not like, oh, I thought a black swan was coming every day for the last three months. Uh, no, I, I literally put out a video a week ago and said, hey, guys, now the opportunity for a black swan is here. It really is. And that's because of this TLT. Why is this seeing so much buying pressure? If it does not fade from this trend line, we might be seeing that moment where it breaks through. We see these yields 
have to tear down with this daily, you know, double top. They have to break down. Why would they have to break down? Well, it would mean that, you know, we're probably going through some kind of crisis and we're about to see that reflected in the market. Now, in order for that crisis to come to fruition, we have to be able to hear about it. We know that a lot of the time when something cra- when something breaks in the system, they don't talk about it for a long time and then until it gets big enough to where um, people actually notice. And I think that's what's going on right now, to be totally honest. Doesn't mean I trade based on that, right? Doesn't mean all those thoughts I just shared. Doesn't mean I trade based on that. I trade based on very simple things. Crosses up, positive territory, breaks through a resistance level. Okay, target, top of the daily range. Another target, top of the weekly range. Boom. If I want to go with a maximum target, I could target this trend line up here. Maybe we do something like that next week. Uh, You know, you just have to think of both at the same time. The debt crisis is real and it's scaling exponentially. Well, just look at the GDP, right? We just got GDP today. I'm going to be very interested to see um, the GDP to growth ratio. Okay, so one name Armando um, sent me a spam email trying to get me to send him $40,000. And I was like, Armando, in the chat, I'm not sending you 40 grand. Hey, Dalvir Dev, Philip, thank you guys for taking the course. Really appreciate you guys getting that before this weekend begins. This is probably the best time to take it as we're going into a point where we could see um, that really start to happen. We could see this two-hour divergence. These are the moments we pay attention to, right? It's kind of like back here. This is a moment we paid attention to, right? We see these divergences, but we see that pull down. There's a 50 right there, curls back up. We know that's not the moment. Now we pay attention again. We see that curl back up. We know that's not the moment. Now we see this bigger move. So we say, okay, this could extend. Now here's that extension. This will be the moment we have to pay attention to. And that's literally like next week. Um, and we do have big news coming out tomorrow. Hey guys, I'm I'm not even kidding. What was I looking at? My ADHD kicked in. He's a Nigerian prince. What the hell was I looking at? Debt crisis. Oh, yeah, that's right. I want to look at GDP. The I wonder if there's a debt to GDP. Let me do this. Let me ask. Let's see if we can find anything fun, some fun info right here. Here, let's do this. Oh, God dang it. I meant to do all that. on. All right, this is a distraction. Maybe I'll look it up later and I'll bring it up this weekend about the debt. I just wanted to see like. I wanted to see like if. um, How much debt we had to use to actually get a good GDP print. Make sure you give Lucas a thumbs up. There are way more people on stream and not giving Lucas the thumbs up. Hey, that's okay. That's okay, guys. We just like to get to 100. What do you think about. Marijuana stocks, um, I mean, we can look at the one that you're looking at. Oof, oh God, you guys. I mean, that's seeing a good print there, right? That's seeing some good movement. What the hell? How high was this? (laughs) How high was this? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, yeah, I'd be very cautious with this stuff, guys. Uh, these penny stocks and things like that, when the spy looks like this, you, you guys, like, be patient. You're going to be able to buy high-end names for a lot cheaper prices, even in a correction here. 
Don't try to make some get rich quick play. That's all I'm saying. Frankie, I love you, but ooh, I don't know. I can't really do anything based on that chart. They're getting so high. Ah, oh, here we go. Let's see. Did DJT just break through? DJT. I'm just going to call it Trump Media or something. I think it was, what, two hour? Look at that curl over. Damn. Okay, so look at the two hour. Remember, this is the area, though, that it has to stay above, I'd say. I know that we came out of it right here. I think that was uh, premature, but I think this is where you actually want to bounce. You see this? Uh, we actually didn't test this level. We just marked off this uh, wick here and we just touched that. So you can see a positive move if we get this 30 minute to curl back up. You start to close below this level like on the daily uh, just a little bit here. You're probably going to come down and try to fill this gap. Look at that, we're just trickling higher in the spy. Nothing bad to see here. One thing to point out though, look at the difference between the Qs and the spy. Interesting. So will the spy go make a new all-time high and will the Qs not? While giving us a divergence on the spy, maybe we even get um, some kind of lower high out of the Qs to curl over when that divergence is set for the spy. That would all be very interesting. I'm down with that. That sounds fun. All right, so now on the 30 minute, what we can look for over the next few minutes here, see if it comes down, goes into this level again. This is a good area here. I mean, you don't, I just think that this is the area where we're really going to see something pop off. If we wanted to go down lower, I'm open to going to 12.12 for volatility. Remember, that's 12.12 is where we actually get a lot of those spikes. So totally open to that. Uh, this one here, I wanted to see if the dollar, it's not really confirming any of these divergences. Look at it on the daily scale. It could be, you know, getting some indecision here. It could be topping out here, so we'll pay attention, but could be consolidating just like it did on this move. But you'd have to say that this is probably moving up, right? You'd have to say this is a good move here. Uh, maybe we actually see that happen again, right? We'd go up to this level, which would come up to these highs here. So we could be seeing that drop a little bit. Last time we were at this was October. And we're almost back there. Yet we are at the most all-time highs ever. So funny that if this move actually happened, we'd be supposed to be probably at the October lows. Hmm. That would be psychotic. I don't think that's what happens, right? We're not going to drop. What is that? and 20 30 percent in like a matter of a couple weeks but um i would say probably gonna stair step our way down honestly i'd say a good point to pay attention to on the spy though 465 62 for the future this level here as well still good even though we're gonna get those new updated weekly monthly or those monthly ranges for you guys so make sure we're joining that patreon if you guys like these monthly expected moves uh very very useful still like you will still see resistance in these areas and things like that. So that's something to pay attention to there. See how it like lines up a lot of the time with some supports and stuff. It's very good for your monthly trading just to have a good idea. You could say, oh, uh, this two hours is supposed to curl up positive territory. You might say, oh, but that monthly's there. So let me not take a risk on this. It can keep you out of some risky stuff. 28 to 25%. Yeah, that, that's most likely where we're heading according to the dollar actually like Actually, we're already, I mean, the dollar's already at levels it was at down there, but the insiders were probably in at that point. So it's kind of like now the insiders are out, the floodgates can open if we start to see some selling come in. Apple holding up just a little bit there. Tesla really don't want to curl over. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Sayed, yeah, uh, it, it does all the time. Yeah, um, we'll see if we can find one. Someone give me give me a stock that's really popped. So let's go with Mara. Let's look at Mara. All right, so say Mara, for instance. Let's go look at that. I'll try to explain this the best I can. There it is. So Mara, it can go way outside of that that area right it has a bunch of calls it's max pain is 2150 
Where's 2150? 2150 is way down here. Now, the thing is, when you see that positivity and people start to get squeezed or anything like that, but this had a lot of calls behind it. So this is most likely going to fade, guys, today. Just going to tell you that right now. This is a ton of calls up in this area. If people start to sell this thing. It can literally go right back down to 2150. Um, but yes, you can see um, stocks go past their max pain. You'll actually a lot of the time not see it land exactly on max pain. Mainly I use max pain to see where those calls and those puts are. So where did uh, Mara go up to? Let's look at that. The, the high on this 2465. Let's see. Well, we have a bunch of call walls here. We have call walls 22, 23, 24, and 25 all have call walls. One put wall at $20. So that's telling me, hey, there's a lot of people that have calls on this. They might start to take profit at this level. That's just, that's just all I'm saying here. Uh, but yeah, you can go way past it. Mainly, I use it as a way to find like, okay, well, my put wall is here. My call wall is here. So if we see big push up to here, people could take profit. If we see a push down to here, people could take profit. And then also you want to pay attention if that happens early in the week. Well, this could go like this and then push through that level because people have a bunch of puts down here. They have to cover. OK, so there's multiple things to pay attention to. But as you're going into Friday, it's a very good shot that this fades throughout the day. Could be wrong. Maybe they maybe they reposition. They take more calls into next week. Who knows? But um, as of right now, I would say that's probably going to fade. AMD. Is. Frustrating at this point, <laughs> I don't even have a play with this and I'm frustrated with it. All right, sorry, I didn't read the chat for a sec. I had I was looking at all kinds of things. Uh, do you think we'll get a pullback to close the end of the day? PCE is in the AM. I actually think it really depends um, what's going to happen. I actually still think the SPY is going to cross to the upside. I really think that we're going to see this, you know, bounce up higher, maybe even into next week. Uh, but that doesn't mean I'm not aware of the signals. Even right now, if we just get some kind of little two hour bar here, maybe another one at the, you know, or just a two hour bar here, we can see that divergence form here. So really, I was going to be more bearish if we saw this just explode, if we get way overextended before the event. Um, but as of right now, I just wanted to point this out. If we held right here on the spy with the two hour, you'd have this double top up here. You see the divergence that could be there. Now, this hasn't crossed, but look at the RSI. So if we exceed that level, you're not going to make a good divergence up here. So there is potential for this to be some kind of double top. Um, just want to put that idea out there. And then maybe next week we could say, OK, if this just curls up, though, I'm going to see that at the next point. QQQ max pain is at it'd be at 441 for today. Yeah, and that can easily drop back down to 441. But when I use Max Payne, I just I, I like to look at what the puts in the calls are at, what what people think is going to happen, and where the price is um, while I'm looking at it. Right. So QQQ. Oh, not QWQQ. That ain't it. QQQ. Tons and tons of puts out there. So what would be the worst thing in the world for um, these these people with all these puts? Well, if this just remains higher for most of the day, right? And then they finally sell all their stuff. And then we just see that drop at the end of the day. They'd be like, ah, damn it. You know, everyone would be pissed. As of right now, you got to say, this looks like it's probably just going to trickle up throughout the day if we squeeze. Because I just want to show you guys the puts here. I'll show you guys this real quick. Look at those puts. Okay, everyone banking on this being bad news. Um, something we might even want to look at is going into next Friday's close. We see some big put strikes adding up right here. So a lot of people seeing some bad news come out. We don't know if these are big guys, most likely. Actually, these might be big guys. We will have to see. Um, but for this week, you just have to say, all right, there's a lot of puts uh, 441. Yeah, but if we just remain higher, all these people slowly go underwater and maybe they flip to the call side. So see this cross up positive territory. All you want to do here, complete the cup, get a handle, go higher. But will the spy be creating a divergence before that happens? That's what I'll pay attention to. All right, let's pop over to NVIDIA, see if that's seeing any kind of strength here. Starting to starting to scoop up, starting to curve a little bit. Not necessarily flaggy anymore. Starting to curve a little bit. 
Good sign. Um, good sign. AMD starting to get a green bar here. Let's see. Come on, man. Come on. You're above all the moving averages now, except for the 50. Come on. And then uh, Amazon also able to get that cross. But look at that. Ooh, creating a divergence up here. Not the best sign going forward. Uh, Mara is, you know, holding at that higher level. We'll pay attention to that going further. SMCI still kind of flagging at this point, not seeing that positivity. We're kind of bouncing around really, really random, but Meta, seeing if that wants to come to the upside here, we could see some kind of uh, push higher if it's able to do that. At least test this high, um, test this level again. This level, very important, this 514 level. Microsoft, the one that we're watching too, just see if that two hour can curl up. You're looking a little bit flaggy at this point on the 15 minute now, uh, and you're at the end of the week, so that 68% chance to go higher is fading in front of your eyes. Now, this doesn't look the most flaggy, actually. This looks like a breakup, consolidation, maybe another breakup, kind of complete that cup, get that handle. You see the liquidity in here is pretty good. So if we come up to this level, boom, get that head and shoulders. We could head higher into next week. I'm a little fearful, so I won't be taking too many big plays throughout the weekend. I want to enjoy my weekend. What about you guys? You guys taking big plays? Are you bullish or bearish for next week considering all those puts? Um, I'm going to follow the price action, not try to read too much into it. I am playing it like this. Frankie Wheelhouse, thank you for donating $20 through the Super Chat. Thanks for all the live shows. I really do enjoy them. Happy Easter to all. That's right. Good Friday tomorrow. Happy holidays. Happy Easter. Um, now, what I was going to say about considering all the puts. So when I when I see that, I say, okay, there's some there's some very negative sentiment for some people on the same strike price, which tells me it might not be too random, right? It might not be too random. It might be someone who knows what they're doing. But also it could tell me, you know, if we just see price head higher, those people go underwater, we squeeze even harder. Um, now, how things are adding up, we have a sketchy thing going on. We get PCE on a day where the market is closed. We get Jerome Powell talking twice, I think, on the day a market's closed. We have TLT behaving like we're about to see a flock to TLT for whatever reason. Um, so that just tells you maybe something in the system is broken. Maybe a black swan's going to happen. But Till that actually comes out, I just have hedges. I'm taking, you know, I have call side stuff and I'm taking hedges against that. Now, and now once I see those signals confirm, you know, we close below the 20, then we can talk like, hey, this could be it. This could be the correction. This could be a crash. Um, so I just want to pay attention to those types of things. But I'm not going to base a whole trading, uh, a whole trade off of just what Max Payne looks like. I can tell you this, though, a uh, bear market causes like the maximum amount of pain in the market. So maybe it, it'll probably be worth for us to look at max pain more if like we start to see some downward price action. That's when it'll be helpful to see where those put and call walls are. IWM. For next Friday. Uh, I would. I mean, I'm not going to tell you this thing can't go higher, but you're outside the Bollinger Band on the daily. You're overbought on a lot of those other charts. You could reconnect. Now, I'm not saying this can't keep going higher. I just saw these divergences down here, and I'm like, oof. Uh, I'd just be a little cautious, but if you know what you're doing and you you have a good assessment of it, go for it. The price target puts is highly bought. I think it was like 425 Not this week, by the way. I'm looking at next week's uh, closing, and it's uh, 425 and 405. I mean, th that could be all hedging, too. So it's like you, you just don't want to read into it too much. Now, if you get towards 425, you can start to read into it and be like, okay, we could bounce from here, blah, 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 blah. But gosh, Frankie, look at that. Look at that $20. It looks so pretty. Thank you so much. <laughs> But yeah, so 425 and it looks like 405. That would mean 425 would be 
Maybe 425. 425 is all the way down here by next week. I highly doubt that. 405 would be like all the way down to here by next week, which something fun I'm doing, guys, if you want to see this. Uh, I actually did a yearly expected move for the spy. It's kind of interesting. I wanted to see what would happen. So 40691 is actually the yearly expected move for the spy. And then the upside yearly expected move uh, is actually 54371. So if we start to get here, uh, then you have to say, okay, this is probably where we top out because this is what the market expects for the entire year. So I'm just playing with it though. I don't know if it's even useful. I've never done it on a yearly scale, but I just want to see. I just want to see how this year pans out if we react off those levels or something. I feel like that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. All right, I'm going to pop out for one second, use the restroom and that good stuff. Let me go put you guys on. Uh, let's look at, let's see if Mara fades. You guys want to watch Mara for a moment? I'll just be like two minutes. So let's look if AMD is able to break to the upside. Oh, God, I, I don't think spy hits 6000. I think uh, what was it spy? My target was 520. Actually, technically, my target was 522. We hit that 530 might be possible at this point, but it's kind of early to talk about. You know, 6000 or 600 for the spy. Hmm. We can look at this real quick before I go get coffee and use the restroom. Yeah, so you still are within this selling pattern. You can drop down. What that would do is fill this gap. Then maybe you want to do something like this in the future. Yeah, just be a little bit cautious. That two hour can roll over. Look, it's by negative territory. So if it starts to break through this flag, cut through this low, you're probably maybe even going to take out this low as well. This really was not the most sturdy low. That 154.78 would be a little bit better, I think, here. But let's see if AMD is actually able to break through to the upside. I'm going to go get... A little bit of coffee and use the restroom real quick. Be right back. Two seconds, Turkish.
You guys, I'm back. Where'd you all go? No, I'm just kidding. What is up, homies? All right, AMD did nothing. Who was surprised about that? Oh, darn. AMD did nothing. Look at that. One more time. Oh, my gosh. AMD is just a total dud. Oh, Meta actually coming down a little bit lower outside of its weekly expected move. This is, this is, uh, remember it can escalate once we get outside of there. Frankie, that, that donation went away, but know that I appreciate it. A bunch of people coming in, getting the course. That's awesome. We have a few days left to get that course today. Um, we were going to go look at. It's better they consolidate here or else it would tank before noon. I think that's actually very, very true. Oh, yeah, I wanted to look at the weekly range for meta. Brain's even more scattered. Yeah, we're we're pretty far below. Actually, we're pretty good amount below that weekly expected move as of right now. Meta actually maybe going to go approach its daily expected move to the downside. So if you're a part of Patreon, you know uh, where meta could actually hold up. Um, if it keeps dropping lower and lower and lower. And I, I think you're right on something like the Qs, the Spy. I think it's very good to consolidate, but I, I would just let you know, this is not necessarily consolidation. So what you want to see from here, uh, maybe even on a 15 minute, right? We're seeing this. You really want this to start to do these little things, right? Get that retest of this area give you that oh well, I guess the cups all the way over here handle start to head higher would make sense there's potential to move higher into next week two hour just needs to curl up it's curling up as of well right now we'll have to see if that holds Nvidia giving up the move Nvidia it's just, it's just not looking strong just yet you're seeing it curl back up so re really just wait for the trigger moment right wait for that Maybe even let's see an hourly if you can get a little closer. There you go. You see the hourly. Now, if the hourly crosses up while this just trickles, be very careful. That can rip away. But if you see a solid bar above this, if you see a solid bar like this that crosses up into positive territory, that could be a good signal that NVIDIA is going to go higher. Be very cautious. PCE tomorrow. Jerome Powell tomorrow. We're going to be live tomorrow talking about this stuff. Um, while, while Jerome Powell is talking, we'll come watch it in the morning. And then Friday, I'm off to grandma's house. Well, not my grandma, but Ari's grandma, my mom. Sideways actions killing the puts, Moji, Joma. Yeah, it, it really does. And that's why I like to take my stuff further out. Like, that's why I don't day trade, because all that has to happen is we move sideways for a day and I'm I'm screwed, right? So uh, Tesla, I mean, 2% down, that's nothing to not to pay attention to what time are you expected to start tomorrow i wanted to see when the pce comes out usually it's like what market open okay core pcs uh an hour before market open what we'll do is he talks at 10 30 i will probably come on at about 9 30 and we can look at some futures and things like that um but yeah, so around nine or well, I guess nine thirty, technically. So nine thirty central time, if that helps you. It would be like an hour after the uh, open for the market, normal open for the market. It'd be an hour after that. Hard. I'm in the I'm in the Midwest. I'm central time, so just uh, nine thirty central. Yo, everything looks. There you go. There you go, Nvidia, you little guy. He's a good little guy. Uh oh. <sighs> Amazon kind of flashing red here, guys. Amazon kind of flashing red, giving you another point of divergence for this 30 minute. Will that be able to cross back down the two hour can, or just reject the two hour? Look at that crossing as of now. I wonder if that'll reject today. That would be a pretty good signal that we're going to see a little bit lower prices on Amazon. Google, another one, uh, not confirming those moves higher at this point. Microsoft not confirming a move higher at this point. So a lot of interesting price action for the day. I will say that a lot of interesting price action. Mara actually climbing back up, 
Climbing back up. This will Mara's one we might watch at the like near the well, I guess I won't be here for the close, but I'd say Mara would be a fun one maybe to watch at the close. You could see, does that just like squeeze into the end of the day? Or do people take profit right before the end of the day? I wonder if that happens. Most likely it's gonna take profit. Just saying. Uh two hour on the spy, still not able to fully get some strength here, but you guys are right. I mean, whoever said it, you're right. Consolidating right here is a very good thing. Okay, consolidating in this area would be great. Pushing up too fast it would be a little worrisome. Problem for me is the day trading pattern. They make me hold contracts longer than I want. Often need to get my account above. Okay. Uh, or, or... And Mo, Mo Joma, I think you mentioned possibly looking at getting the course. I think once you take the course, you're going to be like, OK, maybe I won't do zero DTE anymore. Maybe I'll do a week or at least two, maybe a week. Maybe I'll do two weeks out, maybe at least a week out to give myself more time. It will really, really benefit you to stop trying to do the day trade stuff. I mean, I know people are good at it. It's just something that I, it's my opinion about it. I am not a day trader. I am a, I take a position, I make my money, I get the move, I get out, I get the setup, I take the position a month out, make 100% and get out. That's that's what I've been doing and for a long time and it's really, really good to me. Like people think day trading is the way to make a lot of money. I can tell you if you just if you just trade, use these type of signals and then do month out option plays and then you can still day trade it. You can still literally like if the move happens and you make 100 percent the next day, you can still get out. You still just made 100 percent and then you look for the next one. You do the same thing. The month out just keeps you from one risking a ton of money, right, because you have to put a little bit more behind to get that that further out price but it also saves you if you see another dip down for a triple divergence you can add back in if you see that divergence fail you can get out and it's not going to take away if you do that during the day you're going to see 90 percent of that ripped away but if you do that with a month out or a two week out option you might only lose like 15 20 percent just uh just a something to think about um Apple starting to buy back up. And all right, 1050. We're going to run through uh, most of the stocks here. Let's just run through these stocks and then Luke's got to go. But the spy here, what we're paying attention to, right? We've been talking about it a lot live, okay? This two hour curling up positive territory. Can we get that point of reference? The funny part about this is would that hold some kind of divergence here? That's why I think if we do this, we could see something like this happen. I'm not a Bears fan. I used to be when I was a kid. Luke is me. Uh, Luke is me. My name is Luke. Uh, so I think you could get some kind of prolonged two-hour divergence. Maybe something like this happens if we see that positivity. A little bit worrisome. We're not seeing a ton of strength. But like we said, uh, consolidating here to break through this area would be good, especially before some kind of news with PC and Jerome Powell. We can pay attention to that. The weaker thing, I mean, the 30 minute could roll over into negative territory here. I just want you to be aware we're testing these same levels. This would be a possible double top if it's going to be a fake out. But right now, it re the structure really looks like it's going to be this cup, get a handle and then head higher. But it just tells me I don't want this to fully roll negative, right? So if this starts to roll over on the MACD, good shot. We're testing this level. If it goes negative, we're taking all this out. We might actually head lower into next week, and we'll have to talk about it then. Qs. Uh, the interesting part about the Qs, not able to test the same levels as the SPY at this point. Not able to get there, so we'll pay attention You know, after hours if this is able to make some kind of difference between the SPY and the Qs. We can pay attention to that. But we see the structure to head higher. Argentina, so I am trapped in the market. Holiday. <laughs> uh, I got buddies from Argentina, so... Uh, anyway, we see the left, we see the head. Do we come up to this area, create that right shoulder? That would be a bullish little setup there. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. And then from there, you just want to see, hey, I'll probably know if that move's going to happen if this two hour curls over, right? Every time we curl over, we see 
some big positivity, right? So we could see big positivity again. Um, now we just want to make sure that that actually does come to fruition and we don't see divergences up here on the two hour if that does happen. But be open to that 30 minute rolling over. You could take out this level right here. Apple, this thing sold off, you know, and, and the thing about this is this is when you got to say, hey, I got to get out of this for a moment. Let me see if it wants to base out at lower levels again, right, right around here, and then I can get back in. So that's what I'm overall doing with this. But the two hour looking like it might want to curl over here. If we consolidate here for some time as well, um, right, this would be consolidation, maybe to head lower. So the other thing that could be happening here, though, is look at this. I mean, the head and shoulders looks pretty, pretty good here, right? So if we started to scale up very quickly from here, Hey, the 15 minute rolls up. I can get back into this position and just and start going nuts if Apple goes higher, right? So, Tesla, little bit of a little bit of a flag going on here, and we're not able to touch the bottom of that, right? So, and and take this with a grain of salt, right? It's more of an idea than a for sure flag at this point. Definitely pay attention to this top side, but left we see that maybe we even dip down lower and get that to close that gap down here and then we get that right shoulder to pop up. But that's how you wanna see it break through. Even if it broke through right here, you would just say, okay, maybe this is some kind of double bottom. If I break through this level, good shot. We're gonna see that go up. And from there, I can just pay attention to, uh, the two hour actually did look like it was going to roll over. So I would say you really don't want this to roll over. Um, I think that that's a good sign that this is going to see some weakness, but we've seen it do this in the past where it rolls over briefly. So if it's not able to go negative, it curls back up, we can see more positivity from Tesla moving forward. Amazon, this one is interesting, showing a little bit of weakness as we do break to the upside. So that is very, very interesting. Um, and you're just noticing another point of a possible divergence here. We have divergence across the board. We have daily divergences. We have all kinds of stuff. But in the most recent price action, you do have this little 30 minute triple divergence. OK, so that just tells me I need to be a little cautious about this. We could consolidate again before we head higher. But if that goes negative, takes out this level, you may start that negative trend on the way down. Thoughts on Disney. Yeah, we'll get to that in just one moment. I'll try to tackle that in a second. Uh, NVIDIA, this 15 minute not looking that good, but I wonder if that reposition will happen going on into next week. So I'm not going to get bearish on NVIDIA until it loses as of today, 881.60. That will be the daily. The daily 20 is overall what I'm looking for. It's held up on the 20 plenty of times, so I'm not going to think this is heading lower until we lose the 20 and most likely cut below 840. Then I'll be convinced, hey, this might go lower. But you're noticing something. Bollinger Bands, what are they doing? They're starting to get tighter. So if we mess around for a few more days, this can get really, really tight. Then we can see some kind of explosive move. And we know volatility is very, very tight on that weekly scale. AMD, this one here, looking for that daily to roll up if we want extreme positivity. But this two hour just trickling over like this is starting to lead to that center line. What does it mean when we get towards the center line here? Well, it means that we have the opportunity for this to break to the upside, go positive or break to the downside and go negative. Here's the thing. Uh, this is not too much strength. You're building up a ton of liquidity. And as you get towards that center line, it's a decision time. So once we get closer and closer to here, a decision will be made. Will that break to the upside? Will that break down? We'll have to find out. But I'm telling you right now, this is a ton of liquidity in here to possibly head extremely high or extremely low. So be very careful with this one. Um, but that could curl up that daily MACD and maybe we see higher prices. So if this wanted to come up, uh, you really would want it to break through, come up to this point, maybe make that right shoulder, right? Get some kind of structure in here. Now, if it's going to break down, uh, I think we maybe see a reaction up and we see that come down and we grab this liquidity on the way down. We built up so much in this area that that point is going to be very important in the future. I really think that. Uh, lastly, let's just go through Meta and then uh, we will look at Disney for you um, real quick. But Meta just not looking too good. It could go down towards that daily expected move. If you're part of the Patreon, you get those daily expected moves for Friday and we could head a little bit lower, right? But we are outside the weekly at this point, which tells you the selling can escalate. So just be a little cautious here. The two hours starting to get further away um, from positive territory. So this means, you know, we could start to get some kind of lower high in this area. Looking at a 30 minute here, you're going to see 
it's just not looking very strong across the way here. Um, want to see if anything's said about Metapivot, TikTok, Underbyte, Dan, Snapchat, lawsuit in Canada over alleged addictive products. There you go. It's definitely addictive. Now, uh, this here could produce some kind of divergence, but as that news is just coming out, uh, kind of a bad time to really look for this, but look if it's closing below the 20. All right, so the 20 just tells me, okay, now I have that opportunity to go to the 50. Have I ever held up at the 50? Yes, I have. I actually have held up at the 50 before, right? So uh, we kind of rode the 50 most of the time throughout this, and then we start to retest at this point, and now we haven't tested it since. So look for that 50, but dropping below the 20, uh, not a very good sign. And we're very tight, very tight on these Bollinger Bands. So be careful because we could be getting a big move up or a big move down. And right now you're closing below the 20. And we'll look at the VIX too. I'll look at Disney for you since you guys were so nice and you're patient waiting for it. Here's some Disney for you. Holy crap, that divergence. This thing's going to crash probably in the next month. No, I'm just kidding. Um, that can happen, right? As we look at the daily scale here, we can see divergence all the way up in here. This is a very parabolic move. Might be a good time to take some profit off the table. Look for some kind of pullback before heading higher. That's what I would say. Um, you see that these Bollinger Bands are starting to spread out. So if you start to see this drop below the 20, you can head towards that bottom Bollinger, which might even be down to here by the time it happens. So just be very careful with this, okay? Look, look at this move. Does this look healthy? Yeah, it actually does look pretty good. Boom, structure, boom, structure, boom. Now you need that structure again, right? You'll need that structure or even a more corrective move to pull this down towards the center line like we did right here. Look at that pull down towards the center line. You'd much rather be thinking about taking those calls right around here than up in here when a divergence could just rip everything away from you. Good old Boeing. Let's go, Boeing. All right, Boeing, we talked about this a little bit, that daily um, divergence down here. Flatness of the RSI, a little bit curved up on the MACD. Big move could be incoming. Uh, what could that do? Well, we could see what the weekly looks like at this point. Uh, it's pretty close to the center line. You could get a reaction from this level pretty much. And you do actually have, you do actually have, let me see if I can see this correctly. You do actually on Boeing have almost flatness of the MACD, but you actually do have a divergence on the RSI. So that could tell you, hey, maybe I'm getting a pop. Maybe I come fill this gap. Uh, maybe we grab liquidity up in here to head lower. So maybe like actually this and this was just a false break. Something like this could be happening. Left, head. Maybe you get some kind of right shoulder with this bounce. That's what I would say for, for Boeing as you don't have both indicators telling you that the momentum's dead. You're just really having one. Uh, but you have to be open to it, right? If we get above the 200, there's always a chance for that positivity. So if you want to see a more positive move, connect these guys, see if it's able to come up to that area there. So there's some bullish cases to be had here with that daily divergence. And we'll close on the VIX. We got you. We got you closing on the VIX here. Uh, one thing, as we are on this weekly chart, I just really want to show you guys just how tight this volatility is. Now, uh, the last time we were this tight, it can still go on for a couple of weeks here, go into the end of this, and then we could see that explode. I'm just telling you that this is not looking pretty. And what would happen around, you know, that week of Monday, April 8th? Well, we get CPI that week. Boom. We could see that be the fire hose. We could see everything really start to come down on this. But um, really, on the daily scale, you want to see if this is closing above the 200 and see if that 50 is, clo is crossing over the 200. Right now, still holding at lower levels, not able to cross up on the MACD. So the two hour is what I've said I'm paying attention to multiple times. And I'm like, I'm looking for a pretty clear divergence down here. If I can find a clear divergence down here, I will be happy because this might might go down to 12.12 for a brief moment and then skyrocket back up. But we're wanting to stay within the consolidation right now, not able to break lower. And you do have that little divergence here to give you almost like a double bottom. So. Technicals, though, with the VIX, you really want these things happening with the SPY at the same time. So what could we see here? Well, if this is saying double bottom, if that goes positive, we could see volatility come back in. Well, then double bottom for the VIX. What is the SPY telling me? The SPY is actually telling me, oh, well, this just curled up. I could be getting a double top for the SPY at the same time. So this is just what I would pay attention to. You do have a little bit of a divergence here.
Yeah, but look at this. So you want to see if it's at the same time as the spy. It's a good habit. Happy Friday. It'll help you out. Um, look at this. At the same time, we're hitting this level. Cues not confirming the move higher. Just some interesting behavior. We still don't want to be like, oh, we're predicting it's going to happen. We just want to say maybe it's worth taking a hedge here because, yes, this two hour can see that positivity, but we also could double top because the VIX is double bottoming. Yeah, and it most likely will. But I do I do want to just uh, I got to hop off now. So I just wanted to say thank you guys for showing up. Make sure to if you're thinking about taking that course, this weekend is a great weekend to do it. You can look through those videos multiple times and it's only a hundred dollars. That price will increase um, in April. So March is the last month you can get it for this price. You got a few days left. So I really, really appreciate it. Ocean Goose. You can just scroll through. We just did a little breakdown at the end there. Uh, Patreon really want to just uh, just show you guys how these weekly ranges are helpful. These monthly ranges, if anything, it's a very good tool to use for profit taking. But really, at the end of this, I just want to say Thank you so much for showing up. Thank you for liking, subscribing. You guys are always fantastic. It's always a lot of fun coming out and talking with you guys. And you guys get me to see stocks that I haven't even looked at before a lot of the time. And it's a lot of fun. How long is the course? You can probably finish it just over a weekend. Literally over a weekend. You could probably even go through it twice over the weekend. I am a very uh, a person who believes that you can make things a lot simpler for yourself. And I think that's what people are really enjoying. And trading like water is another thing. So. Yeah, it should take you, you know, it takes you maybe a day to get through, but maybe you want to go through certain areas twice. Sean Enslin, thank you so much for following. Really appreciate it. And I hope you guys do have a great weekend. But I will be live tomorrow at, at uh, 930 a.m. Central Time, an hour before Jerome Powell gives his first talk. All right. So I hope you guys have all the luck in the world trading today. And I hope you guys have a good, well, day. Shoot, I messed that up. Oh, did you just laugh at me? She's rude. Mom's rude. Okay, I hope you guys have all the luck in the world trading today, and I will see you on YouTube later, and I'll see you tomorrow on YouTube Live. Peace. Nicholas, I ran back over here. I saw that you subscribed and I wanted to say thank you.